In the thumbnail to this um, video, uh, we have a warning sign uh, on the thumbnail and a circle around this J equals I because uh, this little beauty here makes this question much more complicated than standard double summations. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up to summing um, and finding a general formula between I equals one to M, J equals I to N of I times J. And we're gonna build up to that by doing some, um, uh, first of all, we're just gonna go through again um, what we did in the previous Cresty Academy video, and uh, I'll do it very quickly. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, um, please uh, go and have a look at it. But what we did was we summed from I equals one to three and J equals one to four, I times J. This is J equals one, not J equals I. And we're just gonna do this one very quickly. Uh, and it will show us what the difference is between uh, these two. Uh, so we had j equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we had i equals 1, 2, and 3. So this was 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and 2 times 4, uh, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and 3 times 4. This was the iterations of, uh, of i and j, and the sum of all that lot gave us 60. So that was the sum between i equals 1 and 3 and j equals 1 and 4. But okay, let's just have a, an, a tiny amendment of this before we do the general case. And we will do a formula for this general case uh, presently. But let's have a look. What would be the difference if we did this? So instead of the, the sum between i equals 1 and 3 and j equals 1 and 4 of ij, it's i equals 1 and 3 and j equals i of 4. Well, when i equals 1 and we go into this thing, well, j can go from 1 to 4, so it's as per usual. When i equals 2, the second time round, j starts at 2, which means that we don't include the j equals 1. And the j equals 1 is this one, so we don't include that. And then when i goes through for the third time, that goes from j equals 3 to 4, which means we don't include that or that either. And so basically the sum of that one will be 60, which is the sum of that one, take away 2 times 1, take away 3 times 1, take away 3 times 2, which equals 49. Okay, so what we want to do is let's try and do this um, with algebra. So and then we can work up to the general case. So the sum between 3 and i equals 1, the sum between 4, j equals i of ij. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we discussed in the previous video, because we're multiplying, we can move that i out here, because this second summation is only summing over j, and so that becomes equal to the sum between 3 and i equals 1 of i, times the sum between 4 and j equals i of uh, j, uh, and let's just have a look at um, this bit here, because the sum between 4 and j equals i, we can rewrite as the sum between 4 and 1 of j, i.e. j equals 1, take away the sum from j equals 1 to j equals i minus 1. Of j. So basically the sum between j equals i and 4 is the sum between j equals 1 and 4, take away the sum between j equals 1 and j equals i minus 1. Okay, so that gives us, uh, sorry and I've missed uh, the i out there, my apologies. Okay, so that gives us the sum between uh, i equals 1 and 3 of i. Well, let's have a look at this. The sum between j equals 1 and 4 of j is basically just 1 add 2 add 3 add 4. Okay, uh, and again, we're going to generalise this presently, but I think it's worth going through this so we can see what we're up against. And now the sum between j equals 1 and i minus 1 of j is just the sum of the first i minus 1 natural numbers, which is equal to i minus 1 times i over 2. And so now we have the sum between i equals 1 and 3 of i times 10 minus i squared over 2 add i over 2. All I've done is I've just uh, expanded that, which equals uh, the sum over i equals 1. Let's take the half out, make it a little bit easier. 20i minus i cubed add I squared. So all I'm doing now is I'm collecting all of these i's together. So you can see this is far harder. Um, and we're, we haven't even done the general case yet. Okay, but at least here now we can put in i equals 1, i equals 2, and i equals 3. 
uh, and that will give us a half. Well, when i equals 1, it will be 20 minus i cubed will be 1 cubed, add i squared will be 1. Add, now put in i equals 2, will be 40 minus 8, add 4. And when i equals 3, and just putting it into here, that will be 60 minus 27, add 9. And if we add the whole lot of that up, that gives us 98 over 2, which equals 49. So at least we have the same answer, and this is how we're going to do it. Okay, so now let's go put the big guns out. We are now going to do the general uh, which will be the sum, which is actually what was on the thumbnail, the sum between i equals 1 and m, the sum between, sum between j equals i and n of i times j. Okay, so this is the general um, formula that we're looking for. And then when we uh, finished it, we can put in m and n uh, to see if we agree uh, 49. Okay, so we're going to take the i out. We've already agreed we can do that because uh, uh, this is summing over j, the second one only. So that becomes the sum between i equals 1 and m the sum between j equals i and n of j. Okay, and we're going to do the same trick that we just did, which is the sum from i equals 1 i times by the sum from j equals 1 to n of j minus the sum from i minus 1, sorry, j equals 1 to i minus 1 of j. All I've done is I've split the sum from j equals i to n to j equals 1 to n minus j equals i minus 1 to j equals 1, same as I did before. Okay, that equals the sum, okay, between uh, i equals 1 and m of i multiplied by, okay, well, let's have a look at that. That is just the sum of the first n natural numbers, so that's easy, n, n plus 1 over 2, few, okay. Uh, and this one here is the sum of the first i minus 1 natural numbers, which is going to be i minus 1 times i over 2. OK, uh, and that, let's take the half out, equals half times the sum between i equals 1 and m of i n n plus 1 minus, I'm just multiplying the i out here, i squared i minus 1, which equals a half sum between i equals 1 and m of i n n plus 1 minus i cubed plus i squared. Okay, so now at least we have a single summation in i. All right, so let's carry on. Um, now, this bit here uh, is just the sum of i times a constant, and this is the sum of i cubed, and this is the sum of i squared. Now, uh, the sum of the first uh, n or m in this case, the sum of the first m square numbers, let's take that one first, the sum of the first m square numbers is known. The sum of the first m cubed numbers, by the way, just in case anybody doesn't know it, that the sum of the first m cubed numbers, let's just put uh, some n equals 1, uh, to, or not, no, let's not use n, let's use p, from n equals 1, and let's not use m, let's use uh, q, of the first m uh, cubed numbers, i.e. k cubed or p cubed or whatever you want to call it, is equal to the sum between q and p equals 1 of the, the natural numbers squared. That's just a little thing. I haven't explained that very well. But basically what it's saying is that the sum of the first n cubed numbers is equal to the square of the first n natural numbers. It's not very well known that. But anyway, let's go back to this question at hand now. So we have equals a half times the sum between... Uh, m and i equals 1 of i times n, n plus 1, which we've agreed is a constant, minus i cubed, add i squared. Okay, and now we're going to put in the formulae for all these, so that equals a half times, okay, well the sum of the first um, m natural numbers is going to be m, n plus 1 over 2 times by the constant n m plus 1. So that summed that. The sum of i cubed, well, we just discussed that, the sum of the uh, the cube numbers from 1 to n is equal to m m plus 1 over 2 squared. That's the way to remember it. It's just it's the square of the sum of the, um, uh, the first uh, n natural numbers. And then i squared is, again, is a well-known formula, m m plus 1, 2 m plus 1 over 6. Okay, so we're getting there. This is the formula. All we need to do now 
is we need to simplify this. Uh, so let's just take the two out. So that equals a quarter times, um, where are we? Uh, and let's take m, m plus one out as well. As well, and that will give us n, m plus one, add two m plus one over three, minus m, m plus one over two. And just simplifying that a little bit, um, that equals one over 24, m, m plus one, times by six n, n plus one, add four m, add two, minus three m squared, minus three m, okay, and then just simplifying that very, very tiny bit more, m, m plus one over 24, times six n, n plus one, minus 3m squared, add m, add 2. And that is the general formula for the sum between i equals 1 and m, j equals i and n of i times j. Now let's just check, um, when we did the question earlier, the question we did was the sum between i equals 1 and 3, j equals i and 4 of i j and we found that was equal to 49 so if we put m equals 3 and n equals 4 into this formula we had better get 49 otherwise my maths video has been completely pointless so let's have a look what we do get if we put it in that means we get uh, 3 times 4 over 24 all I'm doing is sticking m equals 3 and n equals 4 into this formula just to check times 6 times 4 times 5 minus, keep fingers crossed, 3 times 9, add 3, add 2, which equals uh, 24 half times 120 minus 27, add 5, which equals 49. And hey, presto, we have 49. So the formula is correct. Phew. So we know um, that the general sum uh, from i equals 1 to m, j equals i to n of i, j, is this rather horrific looking formula, m, m plus 1 over 24 times 6n, n plus 1 minus 3m squared, add m, add 2. Now, obviously, you would not be expected to remember this in an exam. It is absolutely pointless remembering this formula, but the method by which we got the formula, um, i.e. basically splitting it, um, uh, splitting it all the way up here, uh, where were we? This splitting the j's, and then once we'd split the j's and summed the j's, having to basically sum all of the i's, that method is something that would be very likely to be tested in the exam. Okay, well, I hope you um, enjoyed this um, video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to the Gressy Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.